I am Dr. Pankaj Anand and I am an intensive care specialist or an intensivist meaning thereby that I am a physician who takes care of very sick patients who are admitted in the intensive care units of the hospitals. Over my uh, tenure of last 16-17 years working in ICUs, I have uh, come across many cases where uh, we send the patients home because they don't need for the, any further hospital management, but they are still not fit enough to be independent. So these patients, you can call them bedridden or dependent patients, have to be nursed at home. Now, majority of these patients do not actually need daily, hourly uh, medical or a doctor uh, management. They need, basically what they need is good nursing care and they visit hospitals for the doctor's uh, instructions or uh, doctor's uh, uh, prescription uh, off and on. As I said, they need good nursing care, but in country like India, where uh, it's difficult to uh, engage a full-time nurse because it is a pretty costly thing. So it becomes imperative that uh, our uh, family members learn certain basic skills of uh, nursing, whereby they can take care of uh, their loved ones at home itself. So uh, there are certain few issues that you need to be very careful if your father or a grandfather or mother is bedridden, is at home and you are many at, at times at loss uh, as to how you should be able to manage. Uh, besides the routine medical management, there are certain issues that you need to take care of. Uh, perhaps the most common problem with these patients is that when they lie flat on the bed for a long time, they tend to develop uh, what are termed as bad sores which are wounds uh, in the pressure points on the back and uh, these are actually uh, preventable very easily preventable if proper care is taken but once they happen they cause a lot of distress not just to the patient but to the family also so uh, what you need to do is firstly uh, maintain uh, a proper temperature so if the patient uh, if you're living in a very humid or a very warm environment you probably need a proper air conditioning and you need to frequently change the posture of the patient make them uh, lie on one side for one hour and on the other side uh, the next hour uh, keep the back or the pressure areas dry so two things cause bed sores one is excessive moisture and heat so try and avoid both of them in case you see that probably a something is going wrong with the skin, immediately consult a trained nurse or a doctor. That's very, very important. Uh, second problem is what we call as deep venous thrombosis or DVT, whereby the patient who is lying uh, flat on the bed for a long time tends to have clots developing within their uh, veins, usually of the uh, legs. And if this clot would dislodge and enter their, uh, the uh, blood vessels supplying the lungs, uh, it is catastrophic and causes an instant death. So it is important that uh, you discuss with your doctor as to what thing can be done so that DVTs don't happen. Uh, there are various ways. Try to move your patient if uh, as soon as possible. So be very persuasive if you think your uh, dear one can sit uh, or can walk or can bear weight please uh, try and convince them to do it as soon as possible. That will be a great help in preventing a DVT. Uh, now, what are the uh, warning signs of your bedridden patient that there might be a problem? Uh, remember, if your patient has a special device on him or her, like a, a catheter, you know, catheter is a device, is a tube that allows the urine to uh, be collected in a bag. So uh, be very wary if you find anything abnormal uh, coming out in the urine or uh, uh, you should try and get a regular change in catheters. Uh, say around every two or three weeks, you should try and change the catheter. Uh, if there is the patient has had issues with the respiratory passage and has a tube here, which what we call as a tracheostomy tube, try and learn how to do a proper suction. Trust me, it is very easy. It's not a rocket science. Just be confident. If uh, your patient is diabetic and is on insulin, learn the technique to uh, uh, take 
can give proper insulin now uh, if god forbid your patient starts having fever is is on bed for a long time and has fever don't ignore it that is an important sign of a probable infection coming up from somewhere if the patient has sudden chills or there is some change in the mental status of the patient they start talking uh, irrelevant things or become drowsy these are very important signs if the patient has a cough that is not going easily has respiratory distress please don't ignore it that is very very important also a very important point if your patient is not fully conscious remember a major cause of death is that patient's relatives feed the patient the patient is not fully conscious and the feed instead of going into the stomach goes into the lungs and causes uh, a sudden uh, uh, asphyxiation and the patient dies there and then so always be very wary if your patient is very drowsy don't give anything by mouth the, the doctor would have inserted or the nurse would have inserted a nasogastric tube feed it through it uh, if the patient is conscious enough then make the patient sit and ensure that while you are feeding the patient the patient is conscious and is able to deglutinate if you are giving something and the patient starts coughing stop there and then always remember your visits to the doctor so don't ignore that i had to go next week but i was busy in office that is very very important trust me very few people get an opportunity to do the seva to their uh, near to everyone so if god has given you an opportunity to serve your father your mother or close relative it's an opportunity so don't take it as a burden that's all thank you